What's up guys, Commander Alex here, and today we're going to be talking about Arden. So I'm going to break down all of his abilities for you guys, we're going to move into a build for him, and then finally we're going to finish things off with some tactics and strategies that work very well for him. So let's hop into things here with his Heroic Perk, Julia's Gift. Now his Heroic Perk is that Arden heals for 1% of his missing health every time he takes damage, and the healing can never exceed 75% of the damage taken. So basically, he's going to be very very good against people who hit him, very very quickly but with very little damage per auto attack. So that's going to be people like a um, attack speed glaive or someone like that who does a very little damage but does it a lot of times and that means that you're going to get the max amount of healing with the least amount of damage and that's where you're going to do very well against those type of characters but you're going to do very poorly against characters like Taka or any type of burst damage person who's really going to be able to take you out very very quickly and uh, is really just going to be able to make your heroic perk fairly useless. Now the other end of his heroic perk is that Arden uses something called vengeance rather than energy. Now vengeance is really cool because what happens is when you get you can gain vengeance through pretty much anything. If you auto attack you gain vengeance. If you use an ability you gain vengeance. If you get hit you gain vengeance. Pretty much anything gains Arden vengeance and he gains it passively as well. As long as you're playing your role like you should be playing your role you're going to be getting vengeance and his vengeance is basically his equivalent of energy and it can be used to use his different abilities. Now obviously when you use an ability you're going to be using up some of that energy so definitely uh, be conscious of that and some of your abilities will actually drain your vengeance so you might want to think about that uh, and sort of think about the order that you're using your abilities in. But let's move on to his first ability here. We have Vanguard and that is that Arden dashes to an ally damaging and slowing nearby enemies while granting the target a burst move speed and a 3 second barrier that scales with 50% of Arden's bonus health. Anytime the ally takes damage, Arden gains vengeance, and this ability can be used on Arden, but the barrier speed boost and vengeance gain is only half as strong. And at level 5, Vanguard Drake's uh, grants 30% vengeance when cast on an ally. So basically Vanguard's going to be the way that you're going to get allies out of bad situations. Say someone went a little bit too deep in a team fight and you're thinking that they're not going to get out, you can throw a Vanguard on them. That's going to slow all the enemies around them and that's going to allow your teammate to get out nice and easily and hopefully not take too many hits. Now on the other side of this you can actually use this for chasing. If it's a 1v1 and you're trying to chase somebody down and you're close to them, you can use a Vanguard to not only speed yourself up but also to slow the enemy and really allow yourself to get ahead of them and get some auto attacks off on them. And if you have an ally with you, you can actually apply the Vanguard to an ally and get the full amount of boost speed and that's going to allow them to catch up very very easily to any fleeing enemy to make sure that they can hit him back towards you and hopefully finish the fight. Now moving on here we have Blood for Blood and that is that Arden leaps and punches his target and this deals crystal as well as weapon damage that can crit by the way and applies basic attack effects. Blood for Blood can only be activated when Arden has 100% vengeance and will consume all of it. At level 5, Blood for Blood deals an additional 25% weapon and crystal damage. Now this is basically the only way that Arden can dish out real burst damage. He is not a weapon power sort of person. Obviously he excels with weapon power, but he just can't do that much damage. So this is really where you're going to get that base damage for Arden, where you're really going to be able to take characters out. Now that being said, it does drain all of your vengeance, so you're definitely going to want to build some attack speed on him so that you can refill your vengeance quickly and use this ability very, very often. Now moving on here, we have the Gauntlet, and that is that Arden throws down the Gauntlet, projecting a perimeter around the target area and getting full vengeance. Enemies who cross the perimeter are stunned and take crystal damage, and successfully stunning an enemy grants Arden vengeance, and if Arden leaves the perimeter, it is immediately destroyed. But a fun fact about this one is that if you're killed while still inside of the gauntlet, it will continue to go for the remainder of its duration. So sometimes, even if you think you're going to die, you might want to stick around because your teammates can clean up the fight and the gauntlet can still be there to kind of help them out. So uh, definitely never surrender with Arden. Always stay in that fight to the very last second. And if you think you can keep that gauntlet up to try and help to finish the team fight for your team, you might want to just die and do it. That being said, the gauntlet can be very good good for chasing enemies down as well as defending. Say they're trying to hit you while you're on turret, you can trap them right there, make sure that all of their minions die, and they're going to take a couple turret shots, and if they try to escape, they're going to get a stun, you're going to get some vengeance, and they're going to get a few more turret shots as well. So really a great thing to try and trap people in their turrets, and if you're trying to initiate into a team fight, you can obviously drop that, trap all the enemy teammates in a close quarters sort of area, and then all the area effect alts in the game are just going to be able to rip them up. Scarf's alt, Petal's alt, pretty much anybody's alt that 
that does area effect damage is going to be very, very good with the gauntlet. And then obviously defensively, you can use this to block pathways in the jungle and basically make it impossible for an enemy to try and get through. Now, a fun fact about this is that if you are inside or outside the gauntlet and an enemy tries to pass through the gauntlet to use an ability on you, say Taka is on the inside and you are on the outside, he wants to extra to you, he will pass through, but he will be stunned. So any of the damage that that ability would have done to you will be basically nothing. So that means that he's going to get shot to the outside of the gauntlet, which is good for him, but he's not going to do any damage to you. So you can actually waste people's alts if they don't know exactly what they're doing and if they use them at the wrong time. So a really interesting thing there and definitely something that you might want to keep in mind when dropping the gauntlet. Now we're going to move on to the build for Arden. So first things first, I really like getting the Warhorn for Arden. He is a main jungler, which means that you're definitely going to want to get that uh, little bit of extra damage per second for him. Uh, I believe DPS stands for damage per second, but it could stand for damage per shot. I am not actually sure about that. But then there's also the active, which is really why I think it works well with Arden, and that is that it grants plus 2.75 move speed to all nearby teammates and lasts for one second for each affected hero. So basically, this means that you're going to be able to get your teammates into the fight and get your teammates out of a fight, and it allows you to just have more of that support aspect, which Arden excels at so very, very much. Now, the next thing that I would suggest getting is the Crucible. Now, the reason I like the Crucible is because Arden scales incredibly well with health. His heroic perk based is off of base health, which means that the more base health you have, the more health you're going to be getting back. And his second ability, which I believe is called Blood for Blood, is... Uh, is also scaling off of the health. So that means that the more health you have, the more damage you're going to be doing, and the more health you're going to be getting back. And it's really just something that scales very, very well with Arden. Now that means that we have two of our six items done. I also like building boots on Arden, again, for that mobility aspect, and just because I think boots are kind of a must on any character, because if you're too slow, then you're going to get stu stuck in situations that you don't want to get stuck in, and uh, it's just not going to go well for you. Plus, if you boots, then use your Vanguard. You're going to be super, super speedy, and probably going to be able to get away from pretty much any situation. Now moving on here, I do like to build at least a little bit of weapon power and damage. I like building the breaking point because Arden can stay in a fight for a long time. And with the plus 15 weapon power per stack, you're going to be doing a lot of damage by the end of the fight. So that's why I like building that. Plus the 40% attack speed definitely helps him build that uh, vengeance, which is oh so useful for using his blood for blood. And that brings us up to four of his six abilities. So after that, it gets a little iffy on what you want to build. I personally like going for the Tornado Trigger and then one other defensive item, usually the Fountain of Renewal, but if I don't feel like I want to go for it that day, I can always go for the Second Crucible because plus 1400 max health is definitely something that will affect all of your abilities and make them a lot stronger and let you stay in that fight a lot longer to build stacks on your breaking point. But if you don't want to do that, you can obviously go for full tankiness. You can go for two, crucible, two Crucibles, one Fountain of Renewal, or uh, two crucibles and a situational item. It doesn't really matter. As long as they are building some health and they're keeping you alive longer, it's going to be good in Arden because he's a total tank and he's really just there to soak up the damage and help allies out. And that's kind of his role in battle. So now let's move on to his stat strategies and tactics. Now Arden's a really interesting character because you can jump into situations that most characters would just flat out die in and you can actually end up with either getting a kill, getting an assist, or helping a teammate get out. So it's really, really interesting that you can go in and die so deep and yet still stay alive. So the first thing I like to do is initiate with the gauntlet. Now you have to know that your teammates are going to be with you and that they're going to be able to have all their alts up because if you use the gauntlet and none of your teammates alt, then you're probably not going to be in all that great of a situation because the enemy teammates are just going to chill in there. They're probably going to be shooting you and hitting you on the inside and your teammates aren't going to be, do much to, going to be able to do much to protect you. And that being said, you can get stunned out of your gauntlet, so I really would suggest using the reflex block the minute that you pull the gauntlet out because that means you're not going to be able to get stunned and you're not going to be able to have your gauntlet canceled because getting that thing canceled is a real blow in a team fight. And even though it might not do any damage to you, it's definitely going to be detrimental to your team fight. And in the most cases, it's actually going to end with you losing. Now the next ta tactic that I like playing with Arden is early invades. I like going for a 
uh, let me actually pull it up on the screen here. I like going for an Oak Heart first because that scales really well with his Blood for Blood. I also like going for his Blood for Blood first, and that means that in the early game, you're actually going to be doing quite a bit of damage with that Blood for Blood. So going for an early invade means that you're going to be an Arden and doing damage, which people just don't expect, and that means that you're probably going to be able to at least pick up a kill, if not an assist or uh, something else along those lines. So really, really nice, and obviously getting that early farm is very, very useful. And then after that, obviously, I would go for the Iron Guard contract so that you can get as much gold out of that as possible because if you get it later game it just doesn't really pay for itself as well. Now moving into just general strategies with Arden, you're going to be checking bushes first. You're going to be doing everything that a tank should be doing and if you have to die to keep a teammate alive as long as they aren't just not going to be able to do any damage, it's definitely worth it. So if you have a pedal carry who has tons of damage output, who has a bone saw, a breaking point, two sour blades and a tornado trigger but has absolutely no defense you can sit there and soak up the hits deal at absolutely no damage but as long as you are keeping the pedal alive you are doing your job and that is what Arden is all about it's sacrificing yourself for your teammates and it's giving all of your buffs and all of your abilities over to your teammates to try and keep them alive and to try and allow them to do as much damage as possible so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to leave a like comment and subscription and become a lieutenant today and I will talk to you guys next time